Hey everyone, it's Josh Johnson, and we want to know what do you want to hear us argue about on the podcast? Drop a comment on any hold up clip you see on The Daily Show's Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, or YouTube pages. Uh, or you can tweet at us using the hashtag hold up. Just let us know. Hey everybody, welcome to Hold Up. I'm Josh Johnson. And Josh Johnson! I'm, a, I'm a writer for The Daily Show, and I'm joined by my co host. The fact, the legend, the menace. Don't say slum. I don't know what fact meant, but the it's fact right. that you said the fact. <laughs> the fact. Don't say slow. You have to keep it now. I'm information, Joshua. Now you are a writer on the Daily Show. Mm-hmm. I'm a correspondent, but I didn't want to tell you Happy New Year, Negro. Oh yeah, Happy New Year. Happy motherfucking New Year. Now listen. One of my mm-hmm. friends was like, oh, this year should be great because it's our Jordan year. The fuck does that mean? I guess that was his number. It it was his number, but a lot of... Ugh. There have been a lot of athletes in the history of sport that have not done well with the number 23. I understand it is going to be some people's Jordan year, but you can't tell me anyone that's ever put on the number 23 jersey for football, for, you know... Basketball. Well, you know, these, oh, not, and everyone, people turn 33, they're like, oh, it's your Jesus here. Jesus died and came back on the mm-hmm. third day. That's why we have a whole religion. And so they're like, oh, it's your Jesus here. I, yeah. I don't think anything happened. No, it was a pretty big year for him, but I, yeah, I don't think it means something has to happen for, for me. Every person. I don't think. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't even remember what year that was. When I was 33. So nothing could have happened because I don't I think it would when... pop out to you, yeah. Yeah, like I don't remember when I did it. Uh, yeah. 2016. Oh, 2016. Well, 2016 is when I moved to LA and I was really doing stand up full time. So I guess it did do a thing. Hey, you are really out here All living right, which... that full Jesus year. I was reborn, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I yeah. stopped into a uh, different lifestyle. Truly, because I was, you know, I was able to stop selling stucco, uh, mm-hmm. stop doing bilingual customer service. If you motherfuckers email me again, I remember one day in more, when um, I was taking a nap, mm-hmm. and I got a call from this woman, and she was calling from a temp agency. Yeah, offering me a job. And I said, "Ma'am, I'm not available for this job," and I tried to hang up the phone, and she wouldn't let me. I guess they really needed a bilingual customer service agent. I was like, ma'am, I don't even live in Georgia. I like how you tried to hang up and she, the idea that she didn't let you, the idea that you were about to hang up and then she's on the other end, like, I guess you're just going to let them die then. And then like, you're like, wait, what? What does that mean? What's well, because she was like, because she was getting an attitude with me and that's what I was not understanding. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I don't live in the state of Georgia anymore. Mm-hmm. was not of a viable answer. So I was like, I don't live in Georgia. I'm sorry. Can you take me off your list? Whatever. She's like, I mean, I just don't understand. And I just went, Google me. And I hear, Google you. I said, mm-hmm, because I have time now. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I hear, we've, we've made a part of the day. Right. Sloan. Don't say Sloan. Oh, oh. Okay, yeah, I see what you mean. Thank you. She's like, I'll take you off your list. Thank you. She's like, and congratulations on your success. I said, thank you so much. Yeah. You know, you, know you me always as... turn someone into a friend. Right. <laughs> or a sworn enemy. Because <laughs> some nigga came up to me the other day, some comic, and he was like, hey, don't say my arch nemesis. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. To be your nemesis, I have to know your last name. Which is what an arch nemesis would say, though. To be fair, <laughs> that's an attack. You can't you can't be like, I don't know you well enough to be your arch nemesis. That's one thing. But the way you said it was exactly how an arch nemesis would say it. Because I was like, sir, I really don't have it. And then he said something slick. And I said, you know what? Let's go. You want a nemesis? I was like, I'm not. Because I just, I didn't want, honestly, I just don't care enough to be his arch nemesis yeah you know what it feels like uh and and for the listeners we're gonna get into the episode in a second but what 
what it feels like being your friend and watching you move through the world and also watching you tell stories. <laughs> it feels like when you're telling me the thing, this is now the confessional booth from when the thing happened. Yes. But sometimes you'll tell me about a thing and I don't know if you forgot I was there, but I saw it happen. So then now you're telling me your frame you of mind. You weren't there when I was talking to him. You weren't. I wasn't there when I was t- you were talking to him, but I've been there before when you've told me about things. Oh. And maybe I was in the background or maybe I was at the club and you didn't know. Yeah. But like, like the way that I'll see the thing happen, yeah. but then you tell me later, by the time it's in my head, it's like I'm watching Big Brother. And so you'll be at, you'll be somewhere. And so it'll say something and then you'll be like, don't try me. Then you'll tell me about the thing and you'll be like, and so what's going through my head in the moment? I was like, (laughs) You get the confessional. It's, it's the full edit in my head. Wow. You were talking about selling stucco and you've brought us right into our topic today. For the listeners today, we're doing online shopping yes versus in-store shopping okay hallelujah and i want to shout out real quick because we got this episode topic from someone on instagram leaving a comment because when you leave your comments when you when you make your tweets and you hashtag hold up and when you comment on things under the daily shows page that have us on them we do see them and we mm-hmm. appreciate all of them. And so we saw this. We thought it would be a great topic. So shout out to, I'm going to try to say it right, but it's a handle. So I feel less bad about mispronunciation. Um, Abchesser92 is where we got this from. 92? Yeah. There must well, have been obviously. 91 other Abchessers. No, that's when they were born, friend. Oh, yep. You're right. You're right. Maybe we could edit that part out. <laughs> I'm not looking up that. I remember... I had boobs when this man was born. A person. Mm-hmm. <sighs> anyway, what, what side of the argument do you land on? Of course I'm in store shopping. You're in store? Okay. All right. Like, this that, is, that's this perfectly is the thing. fitting. I'm, I'm still weary about, yes, Amazon has my shit, right? <laughs> Amazon has my credit card information, <laughs> but I don't like it. Yeah. I don't like that now every website wants to store your card in a wallet. Mm-hmm. Everybody, because like I remember when the internet started. Mm-hmm. And what people don't realize was what I, I had a conversation with somebody the other day. And I was like, you know the noise that the internet used to make? Yeah, yeah. The internet used to be loud. They put that noise in. Because they didn't believe people would believe if they didn't have any noise. But my question is, why was that? Why yeah. did a group of adults sit in a room and I think decide on those sounds? I think it's because what what ended up happening was they were looking for sounds to make it sound like the computer was doing something, right? And right. they needed to make people think that computer was putting in work. All right. right? And and those are the most stressed out sounds I've ever heard come out of a machine. So they did they did right by their endeavor. When you would get the the CD ROM from AOL, and it would go, you have this many hours of internet. Could you imagine now someone saying to you, you can only be on the internet for thirty hours total, and then yeah. you have to buy more. It was a pay as you go internet. We'd live in a better world, to be honest with you. True. If there was a limit, if there was a limit on yeah. Twitter, if you could only do Twitter for 20 minutes, ooh, remember you'd have when, to really chill out. <laughs> well, remember when Facebook used to stop? So Facebook in 2005, when I got on Facebook, which is, okay, good God, good <laughs> Jesus above. <laughs> I got on Facebook in 2005. Do you understand? It's 2023. Before Facebook, because I think me and you were talking about this one day, everybody who updated their status, you you were friends with, you'd see all of that. Mm -hmm. And then that was it. And then you were like, okay, I finished Facebook. Oh, so it would stop for you. Like, it It would would be like, that's all we got. Right. So say I'm friends with 200 people. Yeah. If only 30 people updated their status, 
Mm-hmm. Or how many people I knew, you'd scroll to the end, and it's like, and we're done for today. MySpace yeah. was the same thing. You would yeah. I remember, fucking, I remember how MySpace worked. But I remember being in somebody's top eight was a big deal. What I'm saying is that the internet I remember, used to be enough. It used to be enough, and I remember when you didn't put your real name yeah, on the yeah. internet. When yeah. everybody's email address was Pony Girl seven, you know, sixty two, yeah. or you know, Wrestling Maniac eighty eight. My favorite handle to date is. <laughs> I was playing VR and I met this guy playing VR. And his handle was Ferrari sixty nine. You know it. Good Jesus. <laughs> oh, good Jesus! Because something <laughs> happened, idiot. Something happened when Gmail came out, and all of a sudden, all of us had to be professional. Yeah, nobody we really had, had to a, start nobody having had a, business accounts, like business emails. Yeah, like no one had a silly, like, uh, my Hotmail account was Deuce and a Quarter, which is my nickname. Yeah. My Yahoo account was Deuce 2000, Deuce also my nickname. Mm-hmm. And then 2000, because it was literally the year 2000 mm-hmm. at Yahoo.com. But for some reason, when these Gmail a- email addresses came out, we all got really fu- like everyone started using their real name. Mm-hmm. So me coming from the era of you know Black Planet, MySpace, College Club, Mi Gente, Asian Avenue, all of these silly ass websites. Uh, because MySpace is really just trying to teach us all how to code. And mm-hmm. so coming from the era where you didn't use your real name on the internet, and now all of my credit card information is just stored by Con Ed. The fuck? No, I don't need Forever 21 to keep my credit card information. I don't need Rainbow clothing stores to have my credit at all times. I remember when at Rainbow, if you were going to pay with a debit card, you had to show them ID. And if the back of your card wasn't signed, they wouldn't take it. Look, you know who already has your credit card information ready to go if you use it enough, if you're a loyal customer? Online stores. But That's what I don't like. I understand, but if the I don't in like stores can... are doing it, what's the difference? It's, I prefer an on, I'll tell you this. If I go in a store, mm-hmm. it is beneficial for stores to me to go in a store because I'm going to buy more shit if I'm in a store. Mm. Like for the fact that you've gone in a Target. Yeah. You've never gone to a Target and not spent $200. I, I... I disagree, got, but yeah, yeah. No, I mean, once you, you got a good job. Like, when I didn't have the job I have now, or uh-huh. I could easily walk into a Target, get exactly what I was going to get. <laughs> why, did, why did you close one eye? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just... Get exactly, <laughs> wink, wink, what I was exactly. there to get. Yeah, if I came in here for a purse and some cheap-ass earrings... I'm mm-hmm. getting a purse and some cheap ass earrings, maybe a snack. Mm-hmm. And I'm the fuck up out of here. Now I'm in Target like, ooh, what's this? Are there a little like cheap ass section with a little goofy shit in the front that no one knows mm-hmm. what it is, but you still want to buy it? That dumb shit. Because you need, because I need, because, but if I'm on the internet, I'm not going to see these little impulse buys. I'm not going to see this pack of gum. At the register, there's no pack of gum at the register in an online store. You see what I'm saying? Sure, sure, I'm with you. But I, my, my biggest rebuttal to that is that sometimes you'll go in the store and they don't have what you want. Sometimes you will call ahead and ask them specifically if they have what you want, and they really don't feel like doing all that walking, and so they'll lie and say they have what you want, and you get there and they don't have what you want. An online store will tell you up top, we ain't got any. The, the one you like, it's not here. And we'll okay. let you know. We'll send you an email when it gets here. But for today, don't waste your time. That's why. That's why you go to the online store, see if they have it, and then go to the store. Okay. But this is – and this brings up an interesting point because what you're talking about is a bit of a, of a hybrid situation using everything, the pros of everything, which I mm-hmm. am a huge fan of. Mm-hmm. But if we're talking – real 
like real debate, okay? Like real dire straits. And there are some stores that don't have an online website, and there are some websites that have no physical location. If you had to choose between the two of those, you know what I mean? I feel like we'd still land where I'm we're at. Picking, I'm picking somewhere I could walk in. Because one, one, if you are a business that does not have a website where you interact with people, fuck are you doing? <laughs> fuck are you doing? When I see restaurants that don't have websites, I'm like, why? I mean, but maybe Matt they Richards don't did say something, But Matt Richards said something to me interesting the other day. You've never seen a Chinese food restaurant commercial. Yeah, no, because people know. You just people know. know. People know to come through and they know when to come through. Because McDonald's has had commercials for years. Yeah, but McDonald's is trying to sell you on something that's not as timeless as Chinese food. They need a gimmick. They need a gimmick. Because Chinese food, what they do so well is that a bunch of places over over mm -hmm. the whole of our lives, as long as we've been eating Chinese food, we know mm -hmm. that for every Chinese restaurant out there, there are some staples that they will have. And so there's a shared language there that even though all of Chinese food is very different and all of the uh, different restaurants are not a chain, we mm -hmm. still know generally how to navigate based on having been to several Chinese restaurants. Whereas with McDonald's, McDonald's might come to your country. They might be like, hey, have you ever heard of a Big Mac? Let me tell you about a Big Mac. You know, Chinese restaurants, they don't need to be like, have you ever heard of chicken? That's not, <laughs> that's not necessary. I'll tell you this. <laughs> when we all saw the McGriddle. We were like, wow. Wow. Yeah. How do they come up with the technology? Right? <laughs> Wait, what? The McGriddle. It's a pancake with a syrup on the inside. Yeah, and yeah. And then they put sausage, egg, and cheese in the middle. And we're like, this is crazy. How did they do this? Mm -hmm. And then 2016, I'm in the Buford Highway Farmer's Market in Buford Highway, Georgia, <laughs> in Atlanta. And oh. I see this Korean street food. Oh, so they've been jocking Korean street food this entire time. It's a fucking ploy. Wow. It's the same. If I were Korea, I'd go I'd after I'd be mad. Them. I'd go after them. I'd be like, hey, hey, hey. I'd walk into any McDonald's in America and be like, hey, Run hey. Run me my money. Stop the presses, okay? <laughs> Cease and the motherfucking cyst. Stop pressing anything to the grill. Y'all can't afford today, all right? Because I'm suing everything. I still hate putting my credit card information into the internet. I barely like looking at my bank information anywhere. I don't but, like it. I don't, I've never liked it. I'm, I understand. It's super fucking convenient. It's great. PayPal I, still freaks me out. All of this shit still freaks me out. I know that they can steal your information. Like Target had like, yeah, Target got got. They had that leak? But they, yeah, they, they didn't have that leak. They had that full-on spill. That I mean, was, it was, it was. That was everybody. It was, it was a Valdez. It was an Exxon Valdez oil spill. If you don't know what we're talking about, uh, Target had, like, a big hack and a lot of people's credit card numbers and, like, a lot of their information got every, pulled. Every, every, if you, wa if you thought about Target, your information got fucking leaked. Yeah, it was in, and it was in the I think the millions of of customers. So everybody, it's really bad. Yeah, and I think T-Mobile had the same thing happen. My question they did. is, <laughs> I'm always like with these hackers, instead of stealing credit card information, just hack Sally Mae one time. I guess you could do both because then here's the thing: do both. It, I understand you got to get your money. Yeah, because yeah. who's them niggas in the mask that get up and it's like anonymous. Yeah, Anonymous ain't hacked Sally Mae or the Freddie Mac yet. Also, we talk a lot about Sally Mae, but we don't never talk about Freddie Mac, and I don't like that. I think that what's happening with Anonymous is that they are more focused on, like, um, global issues and, like, uh, the, like, economic issues will, 
quickly get them caught. I don't think they'll be as anonymous. If it, like if they leak something from WikiLeaks or something like that, if someone says something that that it, on WhatsApp that's like hateful and might lead to the you know the Arrest the persecution them. of a bunch of people, they they jump in there and they're like, hey, this is this person by the way, just so you know they did it and. Especially if they can uncover it. I think that when it comes to the economic stuff, especially like student loan stuff, I think they know that they would get got so fast that they they're like, we don't need quick. those problems. Oh, because there's not enough VPNs. You can't jump off enough servers. No, no. They're coming straight to your mama house. America does not play with money. No, she never has because yeah. I don't. Which I always thought was interesting because my mother told me anything. If you want to change anything in America, you fuck with the white man's money. Because that's if how you buses come got... for mm-hmm. someone's money. Mm-hmm. Hey, this is this. We're we're playing a different game now. Like we're if you're playing game. politics, it's like some nothing may come of anything, right? right? People can talk and talk and talk all day. Like a lot of what if you look at some of the stuff Anonymous has done, a lot of it started as like truly pranks. And, like, things that were sort of taking the piss out of, you know, politicians and stuff. Money is, you got to be real careful. Because America's a business. America's a business, first and foremost. Yeah. I think people forget, I think some people when they were in school, they weren't paying attention enough to realize that America is a business, has always been a business. I don't think online shopping could have popped anywhere like it did here, anywhere but here. Like, America is so business-oriented, convenience-oriented. I don't think that online shopping would have had the same effect. Because it's like, I know there's times where I'm just like, I need to do X. And that's not only the online shop. It's like, when you think about, like, just Uber Eats or something like that. Like, the other day I was like, hey, I need some stuff from the drugstore. I truly do not have time. Mm Mm-hmm. What if someone just brought this to my house? Mm-hmm. The fact that there, when I was a kid, that wasn't a thing because we had stopped doing, like, pizza and Chinese food got delivered. Mm-hmm. You had to go to McDonald's. Yeah, yeah. Every, pizza and Chinese food delivered. Everything else you had to go pick up. New York is different just because if everybody went to McDonald's. Yeah. The whole th- If everybody went to go get what they needed in New York, the city would shut down. There's too many humans in the fucking street. So yeah. you needed, I think... Online shopping has its benefits, but the thing that's, but the cons are, so, you know, I went on vacation last month Mm -hmm. and I needed a new bathing suit, as my mama calls it. Okay. And I ordered a bunch of bathing suits Mm -hmm. because they don't, we don't sell bathing suits in the wintertime. Yeah. In department stores. So I had to order a bunch of bathing suits off of Bezos' internet. Mm Mm-hmm. I now have 11 bathing suits that I have to return. Mm-hmm. And you can't just go to, because before Amazon would come to you if you had to return something. They don't do that anymore because they realize that people are lazy enough. Well, they'll forget to return something and then they just don't have to refund people. They just have the money. So now I have until the 31st to return 11 bathing suits that don't fit. I'm and that's, you. I think, is a pitfall with online shopping because now if something doesn't work, if something doesn't fit, now mm-hmm. I have to go to the Whole Foods to find the Amazon locker to return this. Fu- I bought a tea kettle from fucking Amazon. Fresh out the box did not work. I don't know if someone else returned it. And I think I had a shorter return window or a missed return window because I think they emailed me and they were like, hey, we charge you. And I was like, fuck. But I was on mm-hmm. the road, and again, and that's the thing. If you don't yeah. return it, you bought it. Okay, so let's... But I let, promise you right now, these 11 yeah. bathing suits, oh, they going the fuck back. I've, I'm with you. I, I'm in full support of, uh, of everything that you said just now as a con, because I accept them as cons of online shopping. This is, this is where I think that online shopping is a bit superior in that we don't give credit to online shopping for the things that in-store brick and mortar stores do that ends up being online. So for instance, with online shopping, hey, we will let you know when the thing is back in stock. You'll get an email from us as soon as the thing is back in stock and we can send it to you. If you're at a brick and mortar only store and they don't have what you want, they're not calling you a week from now to be like, hey, by the way, we got it. 
Maybe a comic book shop will do that. That's the only person I've ever had hit me up after I've been in there looking for something specific and then left my info with them. And then they hit me up and they were like, hey, we, we got it if you want to come back through. Right. I, you That's be an reading aspect. Comic books like that? When I was little. Yeah. All right. Sustain. Keep going. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now. Now, if they don't have what I want, I just leave. I don't tell them to contact me. <laughs> Hey, hey, I, listen. I, I need don't need Superman. it that bad now. Okay. I was like, Josh Johnson walking in at 32 years old being like, yeah, I need the Superman number 865. Uh, yeah. Paragraph B. Um... Paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> the idea, the most insulting thing about that whole like rant you just went on was that I'd buy just the paragraph. Like... <laughs> You know what? They had the new Superman boy, the new Spider-Man boy that came out, Miles Morales. Mm-hmm. This is my question. Mm-hmm. If the daddy black and the mama Puerto Rican and the daddy is there, how is his last name Morales? Is the daddy also Latino? I mean, maybe he was mad at his daddy, you know? Maybe he's like, hey, I go with maiden names when you're not acting right, Okay. <laughs> Because I saw that and I was like, okay, that's awesome. It's a whole Afro-Latino family. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, the dad's black and the mom is Puerto Rican. So I'm like, is this his stepdaddy? Look, I'm I'm not going to lie to you. I haven't kept up hard. I haven't. Um, listen, when it, there's like a, because he, he's like in a multiverse, right? Where there's a spider pig and all kinds of shit, right? You might be asking the wrong one. I, I'm. I I, <laughs> was that not your universe? It, it, it was not. I liked it growing up, but I have not read Spider Man in quite a while. I, I think that I just used it as an example because, to me, there are things that we think brick and mortar stores do that are actually aspects of online shopping, and I think that you gotta, you gotta pull that over. If we're splitting it down the middle. You got to push that couch on my side because the the notifications and the uh, recommendations are you're going to get those mainly online. You might go into a brick and mortar store and find a sales associate passionate enough to help you find the right top for you, the right pants that look good. That's not just trying to upsell you. You might find that genuine person. They're out there. But. There's a higher likelihood that based off what you like, a website will pick something else that you might like and be right. But I'll say this. When I really need something, mm -hmm. it's not in a store. It's not on the end. It's sold out. When I really need something, it's never there. <laughs> now, I really needed some black flats. Okay. The store didn't have them. They had to mail them to me. I needed a new purse. Store didn't have it. I'm going to have, probably have to find one online, like a real leather purse, because um, my friends have shamed me and told me that I can afford a real leather purse because at one point my other purse was peeling. So they were like, you make. Yeah. Yeah. You have a good job. Your purse can't be peeling. Um, but I've it's very rare. I go into a store and I'm just like black leather purse is what I need. It's, it's like it's a lot of times I can't find what I want anyway. Mm hmm. So going into a store, it's like, hey, you know what? I didn't find what I wanted. I didn't find what I needed. Mm -hmm. But I found something that works. Ooh, I just realized another thing. Another pro for online shopping. Mm. When you're online shopping. Do you mean food or stuff? Um, I guess I was thinking just stuff for this episode. Okay, because I had them deliver groceries. I did Amazon deliver groceries to me. Yeah, yeah. I never want another human being to pick up my fruit or meat ever again. Oh, really? I never want another person to pick up my produce or my fruit or my meat. Wow. Ever okay. again. Wow. Ever again. Yeah. I, I realized uh, while you were talking before, another pro, especially for us, of online shopping, mm. nobody follows you in the store. You know, it's following you through the Internet. Yep. Yep. You're really just out here free to shop in peace, in bed, in pajamas. Yeah. Maybe a Snuggie. Yeah. Yo, Try the... doing that experience in a brick and mortar. Roll up to a brick and mortar store with a Snuggie. 
right? You know there are stories you can walk through, but it's not healing. There are some. But try just walking through a store without getting looks, especially depending on the store. There are people who use the Internet to find the dress they want to wear for their wedding. Roll up to a wedding dress store with a Snuggie on. They won't even let you try stuff on. They'll be like, no, no. Sustained. You're clearly going through something. No. You clearly haven't showered. Clearly you haven't clearly, showered. it's musty under that Snuggie. Bro. Yeah. Being musty is one of the cardinal sins of black people. Yeah. It really is. Truly. It's like, it's one of those things where it'll change your whole view on the person. Like someone could be giving a, a lecture at a university but if you pass them and they got they got that you know that that smell that's it's BO but it's also choked. Yeah. Like they've been choking stink all day. Like you can tell they put on extra layers so the stink wouldn't get through. <gasps> if someone smells that on you, no matter what your lecture was about, they're like, I bet you you were wrong. I bet you're not as smart as I thought you were because you stink. We are so funny about smelling good. Yeah, yeah. I will even have – I've had the thing where this is really unfair because you know you know about pheromones, right? I love pheromones, but they will – but the thing is because you don't have any siblings, right? No. There's something that happens when you're a teenager, and I probably, this is probably just nature. Yours, especially like a brother to a sister mm-hmm. or just a brother or just a son to – boys when they go through puberty smell like a family member male smell terrible yeah my brother fresh out the shower i remember my mother yelling at him being like what the fuck and he's like i just took a shower and me and my mother being like p you i don't it must be (laughs) all right (laughs) But yes, tell me about your pheromones, Joshua. Because you'll smell- no, it's, it's 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 not my pheromones. It's a mm. it's a thing I witnessed. I mm. I was uh, I think I was playing. I was I was like playing soccer with some people, and afterwards uh, we met up with some friends, and they were all talking about. So we all stink from running around in the sun and like trying yeah. to score goals and stuff like that. And there was this dude who was already good looking, but. The way that the that the women in that group were trying to get near him and were talking about how good he smelled when he was gone, when he was in the bathroom, I was so upset because I know that they were going off those pheromones he was dropping yeah. from, you know, just having rippling muscles, maybe muscle sweat different. I have no idea. But the way that they were going about the pheromones, I was like, this dude can't be good looking and have good stink sweat. That's not was- fair. I'll tell you that I saw a study one time where they took, it was like a college. They had like just women just wear t-shirts like before their cycle, during their cycle and after their cycle. Mm -hmm. And they gave these t-shirts to men, like, you know, college age boys. And they were like, smell these shirts. How, how, How attractive do you think the person is? And they tracked that right before the menstrual cycle, of course, is where all these men were like, Yo, who is this person? <laughs> yeah, she smelled like a good person. Yeah, she smells like she's beautiful. I am someone who had to have Plan B delivered to me. And that, that is a blessing. The other benefit of an online store, no lockup. You're not going to Walgreens, hitting the button, waiting for somebody to sh- like run by and be like, which one do you want to get? And then unlock the thing and then pull it out for you. Online shopping, you just add to cart. Honestly, when are we going to just make the whole store that? Yeah. It's almost there. It's like the only thing they haven't locked up is the, is the chips. When they started locking up baby formula, I was like, this country's trash. We have a little bit of pride where when someone comes here and talks about how trash we are, we get defensive. But it's so funny when I travel and I'm like, oh, y'all don't in the street. Y'all don't like it's like you don't even have a, a way to bridge two ideas. Like, I remember it, being in the UK, like being in London and going in like their Walgreens, which was called Boots. And mm-hmm. I was like, and nothing was locked up. Now it was nothing locked up. 
they'll give you recommendations. This this thing I liked because when we were in London, and I remember I had to get that. Um, I, I got something because I I had hurt myself, oh, right? So I was killer. trying to get some oh, painkiller. Oh, we went to a real pharmacy. We went to a real pharmacy, and there was this one lady that was like, "Look, it's Russian. I don't know what it says, but it works." Oh, and she I gave us like, Russian Tylenol. Yeah, she gave me those Russian Tylenol, and I was like, "Wait, so are you saying like, is this over the counter or is it?" She's like, "It's a little strong." Like I was like, "She was like, what? how much? Do you, what hurts? Here, none of the package was in English." Yeah. none of the package was in English. I don't even know how she knew what she was selling. Because when I was in yeah. the Bahamas, uh, one of my friends had lost her inhaler. And another friend, uh, the bugs are just really eating her up and she was having a bad histamine reaction. And our chef told us to go to the pharmacy and she's like, just tell them you need a new inhaler. And just tell, and she just gave her an inhaler, just an albuterol inhaler. And then gave my friend some other prescription strength. And I was just like, Oh yeah, back in this day, you used to be able to go to a pharmacy and go, "Hey, here's a problem." Yeah, I, I will say that's a good point. That's the the thing that I think the concession I can make mm. is that brick and mortar stores have better customer service than online shopping because online shopping they don't want they don't even want you to call. They won't no. tell you. you You'll have to Google the number. You'll Google the number for a place that has a store that should have the number on the website. You can't call Amazon. Yeah. You can't. There's no number. Amazon has no customer service. And for as large as that company is, as someone who worked customer service for like 12 years, a fact that a company that big doesn't have customer service is insane. It shouldn't be legal. It shouldn't. I can't call. Where is my waffle iron? <laughs> <laughs> the up is not updating. I got kids in here. I'm supposed to be having top of the line four burner top waffle iron. Trademark by Waffle House waffle irons. Bro, it yeah. comes with a fight in every box. Yeah. Where is my what? There's no one to call. As soon as you open the box, you get a punch in the face. Truly. And a convict is cooking your eggs. Mm-hmm. Because he's good at it, right? Delicious. Yeah. Delicious. Where the fuck is my you can't call you can't call Amazon and find out? You know, yeah, you're not wrong. So I think it's time to kick this over to the listeners. I think um, you're right. Did we make valid points? I think we made a few. I think we made at least two each. At least two each. Tell us what you think. Do you think Online store or in store shopping. I'm gonna be in store shopping all the way because I got I like the touch, the feel of cotton, the fabric of our lives. You understand what I'm saying? I <laughs> um <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to be online shopping because I care about the future and uh I think that there's even more innovations to be made. I think we've taken the brick and mortar store as far as it's going to go. I think that everything that's coming for the future of shopping is going to be online. So You know what needs to happen? You know how like food trucks or when they get to a point they could do brick and mortar store? Yeah. We need You remember the bookmobile when you were a kid? Yep. That's what we need to start doing with these trucks. Mobile just, stores, baby girl. Okay. Yeah. Pull up in your neighborhood with the essentials. This sounds like the most kidnappable store I've ever heard. You gotta roll up and then be like, come on in and and get your supplies. And then you're yeah. just gonna close the van and drive off. It's like it could be like a bookmobile situation. Mm-hmm. Or it could be like an ice cream truck situation. We pull up. You see the pictures on the side, like, yo, let me get some toilet paper. Let me get some paper towels. Let me get some dishwashing liquid. Let me get some diapers. Let me get some tampons. Mm -hmm. Cat food. And I'm out. Just roll yeah. up in your neighborhood. Okay. I mean, that, yeah. I think that, I mean, that would be a... the evolution of the brick and mortar store. I think 
Mm-hmm. That's the next step because, like, Movement. say some place like here, people gotta go to the train. People gotta do this. Like, could you imagine if a mobile, if just J.C. Penney's just pulled up in your neighborhood? <laughs> also, they keep telling me there's no S on the end of it, and I, that I don't believe them. Yeah, Dillard's I mean, pull up. <laughs> yeah, Dillard's pull up in the apartments. You know. Nordstrom rack. Let's go. There's a, there's yeah. a dressing room in this bitch. I'm we with understand. You. Pull up. There's a fitting room. I've been in one of those wardrobe trucks on set. So let us know what you think. You know, let us know if you either of us have won you over from the position you started in, or if you were with us the whole time. We want to hear from you. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I'm. I'm Josh Johnson. If you want more of me, you can find me on my podcast, The Josh Johnson Show, which is wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you are looking for Dulce. Sharks, today I come to you with my new business. Oh, gosh. Okay. Store on wheels, baby girl. You can find me in your hood, in your neighborhood, (laughs) in the mall with your daddy. You know what I mean? I'm on the internet. You know what it is. Also, hey man, call your mama. Bye. See ya.